We want to talk about the next essential in our list of essentials, and that is swing plane. And that term a lot of times seems a little bit complicated, but I hopefully at the end of this segment it will seem pretty simple to you. Uh, what has happened to so many golfers is they set up to the ball. They're trying to hit it. In this case, we're pointing toward that uh, bunker out there straight away. And it seems like if I took the club straight back and straight through toward that bunker, the ball should go straight. So when somebody says that to you, it makes sense. Unfortunately, it couldn't be any farther from the truth. Uh, croquet mallets go straight back and straight through. Pool cues go straight back and straight through. Golf clubs shaped like this, they don't go straight back and straight through. So the first thing you want to do is pretend the ball's teed up at waist high, like baseball tee ball. So it's teed up right here. If the ball was up here, we'd all gravitate to a very similar circle. Okay, it'd be very circular in nature, and we talk about keeping it level. So it would be level to that ball we're trying to hit. So we wouldn't go under and up. That'd be a noticeable glancing upward blow. We wouldn't go up and across. That'd be a noticeable downward glancing blow. We'd, we'd all really talk a lot about keeping it level. We'd see that folded elbow, hinged wrist to a folded elbow and hinged wrist on the other side. Be a lot of symmetry to the swing. So what we're going to do is... That flat surface, that's where the word plane comes from. In geometry, that's what a, a plane is, P-L-A-N-E. It's a flat surface. So now, if a laser beam was pointing out of this shaft, it would point to what you're trying to hit, which is right up here at waist high, the ball. And then for golf, we lean over. So we lean over, and now the ball's on the ground. And so this gives you a representation of the ideal swing plane on the way down to the ball. So we see Jim Furyk and Ray Floyd and these different unique backswings, and we say, hey, that's okay. The ball doesn't get hit by the backswing. We're really concerned about where that club is on the way down to the golf ball. So if the golf club is under, below that ideal angle, you're going to hit pushes and hooks. It's if, if it's above that ideal angle, you're going to hit pulls and slices. So let me demonstrate a couple of those hitting toward that bunker, the first one I'm going to go back and I'm going to go under the ideal uh, angle that we're wanting to create. And so it comes too much from the inside and hits the ball in that case to the right. The next one I'm going to swing back and I'm going to go above the ideal circle. So this ends up the most common swing plane we see, the out to end plane coming to the ball. And so the divot goes left, the ball starts left, and in that case it started left and had a little bit of slice spin to it. And then what we'd like to see is we'd like to see the golf club come down, laser beam basically pointed toward that uh, where the ball is, where the line is, and then it comes through and has that same tilted over circle look on the other side. So that's a very on plane swing and then by having that image and that idea you're on the right track. And let me give you one other idea. I want to go over here to this uneven line mound and if you had a ball above your feet that also gives you a chance at this. So when you put a ball above your feet, you wouldn't think straight back and straight through. You'd think around and around. So it's a great way to practice. If your swing is too vertical, too steep, you're hitting too many pulls and slices, find you a ball above your feet somewhere and just practice around and around. So when you're working on swing plane, you've got a great opportunity to get the golf club working efficiently so to hit straight shots in golf, it's counterintuitive. You've got to swing in a circle to hit the ball straight.